Hello and welcome back to this series of tutorials presented by Neometrics Technologies. Um, in these tutorials, uh, we will be continue to explore and practice some of the design capabilities of Geomagic Design X. In this third exercise, we will be surfacing a bicycle seat and the main objectives are going to be clean and editing a polygon mesh, aligning the mesh to a coordinate system, and then generating a boundary fit surface model. So let's go ahead and begin by um, importing our mesh here at the top, bike seat. Um, and import only. Um, so we have our bike seat, and obviously it's not aligned. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off those reference planes for just right now. Um, as you can see, we do have a, a bunch of extra uh, mesh polygons that aren't actually part of the model that we're going to be trying to create. So we can go ahead and just start off by getting rid of those. Um, up in our selection tools, I'm going to choose flood selection mode and just click on that bicycle seat. Now we actually want to get rid of all of this, so we're just going to go ahead and invert that selection by holding down the control, shift, and I keys. It's going to invert that selection for us, and we can just go ahead and click delete. Um, now there is still a little bit um, just off to the back here that we want to get rid of as well. So um, there's a few different options that we can do. Um, lasso selection mode is one. Um, we'll just go ahead and create a lasso around the area that we want to create. You can also use a paintbrush um, to go ahead and just paint select what we want to get rid of as well. So those are just some of the options. You do have a circular option, um, another um, polyline selection mode, a rectangular mode like we were using before. Okay, so now that we have cleaned up that mesh a little bit, let's go ahead and fill in some of these holes um, down at the, um, around the edge of the seat and on top. Um, so we're going to go over to the polygon tab. And in the repair holes and boss section, we're going to choose fill holes. Um, so let's go ahead and start by filling in the holes that have openings. Um, so to do that, we're going to use our gulf tool. And we're just going to come in and select one edge of the bottom, bring it around, and select another edge. And we'll do the same thing for this one right here. And maybe this one as well. Okay, and just be careful because sometimes it will not let you um, select the entirety if there's overlapping mesh. Uh, and that one right there. Let's try this one. So. Okay, and there's a few on the back over here. So let's go ahead and get those. Okay, so it looks like we got the major ones, so we can go ahead and go on to the next stage. And we can see what that looks like. Looks pretty good. Um, and we still have some holes um, off here to the sides um, as well as a few on top. Now these seven holes up at the top are going to be our mounting holes, so we're just we're going to want to keep those. Let's go ahead and fix the other ones for now. So we'll go back to fill holes, and I have my box select, um, selected, so let's go ahead and select the entire model. And I'm just going to go ahead and deselect um, the boundary and the holes that we do want to keep. So holding them, holding down the control key, we're just going to go ahead and select those few that we don't want to get rid of. Um, this is better if you have a lot of tiny holes to do the box look method, um, as opposed to um, choosing every single hole separately. As you can see, we have quite a few um, that we do have to fill in, and it can be kind of time, time consuming to do so. So we'll just go ahead and click OK. Okay, so taking a look at our model, we have a pretty good um, idea of um, what our, our mesh is going to look like, um, and we can go ahead and continue with surfacing the bicycle seat. Um, the next part um, we can do actually is to align um, the, the mesh to the global coordinate system. Okay, so now that we've filled in those holes, um, we can go ahead and begin our alignment process. Um, to do so, we're going to create a plane of symmetry, which is a, a two-step process. So let's go up to the Model tab, and we're going to choose Plane. Let's go ahead and orient this bike seat um, in kind of a bird's eye view um, direction. So we can go ahead and choose the method to be um, Draw a Line. We're just going to draw a line down the center of this bike seat, um, and then we'll create another plane to balance out some of the geometry. So now that we have that plane, um, now that we have that line, we can go ahead and click OK, and it gives us the plane that we'd like. And we're going to create one more plane. 
um, and that's going to kind of um, more accurately give us a straight plane down the actual center of um, the bike seat. So we're going to choose, um, just go ahead and um, uh, click select our bike seat and also our plane one, and it's going to automatically um, set the method to be mirror, and we'll click OK. And so there we have plane two, and as you can see, it's more accurately down the center of that bike seat. Um, so we can go ahead and proceed with um, the next reference plane. Um, that one's going to be on this flat surface, flat-like surface of the bicycle seat. And for that method, we're going to choose picking multiple points. And we're just going to choose them kind of towards this area over here. Select four. And now we have another plane. Okay, so now that we have our two planes that we need, I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the rest of the planes that we're not going to be using right at this moment. And we can go over to the alignment tab and choose interactive alignment. Um, our moving entity is going to be the bike seat and it's going to be pre-aligned with global origin. Let's go on to the next stage. Um, and then for this method, uh, we can just go ahead and choose um, the plane to be the first plane that we created and the vector will be our um, third plane. And go ahead and click OK. And let's go ahead and see what that looks like with the global coordinates. OK, there we go. So that's what our, that's where our plane three is now. <laughs> and this is where the bike seat is oriented now. So let's go ahead and delete these three planes that we created since we no longer need them. OK. And the next step is going to be um, to defeature um, uh, these holes. Um, but before we do that, we're going to go ahead and create a copy of this mesh. So dropping down this menu right here, just go ahead and select that and control C and control V on the mesh. And we'll turn off the first mesh for now. I'm also going to just hide those reference planes. Um, okay, so let's go over to um, the polygons tab again, and we're going to choose to uh, defeature uh, this, these several holes. And we're going to choose uh, the circle selection method to do that. So let's go ahead and select and hold down the control key. I'm sorry, the shift key to uh, choose multiple holes. And we still want the, um, the placement of those holes. That's why we created the copy of the mesh so that we can later add those into it. But this is going to be used for creating a much smoother surface to start off with. So now that we have that, we can click OK. OK, and so that's the mesh that we have right now. And as you can see, it's still a little rough. Um, so there are a few things that we can do to it. Um, for, this, um, for this mesh, we're going to go ahead and um, do a rewrap. So I'll go ahead and just select that uh, mesh. And going into the optimize section, we'll select from the drop down menu rewrap. And um, for this one, we're going to pretty much uh, create just a, a smooth and clean mesh. Um, and we're going to set the accuracy to be about 50%. And the overall smoothness is going to be 50% as well. Um, we're going to make sure extend boundaries is selected and we're going to choose fully curved. And then lastly, we're going to see that the mesh density should be selected to fully dense. So go ahead and click OK. And it's going to go ahead and calculate that for us. OK, should get something like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and start um, doing a little bit of a sketch on this plane to create a cutout of that. Um, so let's go over to the 3D sketch tab. From the drop down menu, we're going to choose 3D mesh sketch. And we're going to create box segments 
um, to kind of analyze this, this seed a little bit better for our, our later on. So in the draw section, uh, in the draw area, we're going to choose section. And for this one, we're going to do n, between, n division between two planes. So I guess we can go ahead and turn that back on for now. The first one I'll do is I'll choose um, the front plane as the base plane. We're going to set the number of sections to be seven with equal spacing. So just go ahead and zoom out and pull these outer planes to be just outside of the bicycle seat. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, let's move that out a little bit. Man, let's move this one out a little bit. And of course you can always drag and drag and move the arrows as need be. Okay, so looks like we have seven sections there. We can go ahead and click OK. And we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing using our right plane. Now what we've just created by using the section is we've created splines along the mesh. Now these splines, even though they look like they're overlapping, they aren't necessarily intersecting. Um, and that's something that we do want. So we're just going to go up to the join section and click um, to do an intersection. And we're setting it to be 0.1 millimeters for this case. And once we're done with that, we'll get these large, large nodes that show that we do have an intersection at that point. Now, there are some splines that do end in, in an off, um, non-connected way. We're going to want to get rid of those because we want to create um, pretty much a, a shape that has four sides and it's close to square, um, square shape. Um, kind of trying to avoid any curves because this is a mechanical software. It's going to kind of try to calculate it in a mechanical way. So we'll just go ahead and connect those two off to the side there. And I believe that should be the only one that is not connected. Yep. So let's go ahead and trim off the excess ones that we won't be using. So just going up to the edit um, section using the trim tool and it's going to pick curve portion to trim. And we'll just go ahead and get rid of those. And I'm not sure if I've stated this before, but you can use a um, command um, where you hold down the shift key and select Z to do a quick zoom. And then just um, shift Z to turn it back off again. And so we can get that. Okay. And now it's highlighted uh, an orange area um, as the base of it. So what we can do now is we can exit out of the um, 3D sketch. And we can begin... Um, the surfacing. So let's go ahead and exit. And since we just created that mat, that um, that three D sketch, it's going to be automatically selected. But if it's not, go ahead and select it. Then we're going to come up to um, menu and go to the add-ins. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and choose legacy boundary fit. Select that. And for this one, we're going to just go ahead and accept all the defaults. Um, let me just pull that back in a little bit and go ahead and click next stage. Now it's going to um, start calculating a little bit. Uh, um, once we click OK, it'll start doing the calculations of where it thinks the surface should fall. And it'll create that surface for us. Sometimes you'll be prompted that one or more surfaces cannot be fitted. Sometimes that means that um, the splines were not um, completely connected all the way. Um, let's just take a look to see. And this is kind of what we were looking for anyway, so it's nothing that affects um, our design. But if you do have that, just go ahead and go back into your sketch and make sure that you don't have any um, splines that aren't connected, because uh, that can be causing the issue. OK, so now that we have something like this, we're going to go ahead and want to trim that boundary. Um, in order to do so, we're going to create a boundary curve in a second 3D um, mesh sketch using the original mesh. So go ahead and we're just going to turn this um, surface body off right now. Choose the original mesh sketch, um, uh, mesh uh, data, and we're going to go into the 3D sketch tab, choose 3D mesh sketch. And I'll go ahead and turn off that. Oh, it reopened that one. Go ahead and exit that again. Okay, <laughs> so I'm selecting that selecting the bike seat, going to 3D mesh sketch. And um, we're going to select the, the boundary. Um, so coming over into the draw section, choose boundary, and then just go ahead and hover over the boundary of the seat and select it. 
clicking accept. Okay, and um, really quickly cut. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and click accept. And that's going to give us that boundary. Um, and we did have that smoothness slider to be about 50%. Um, and the resultant curve that we're going to get is going to be very, very large. Um, we're actually going to want to create a, um, a curve that's quite smaller than 1,300 points. So it's up here. You can just go ahead and select the, the spline. And up here at the top, we can go ahead and change the number of um, interpolation points. Um, and we're going to set it to be about 100. Let's take a look at what that looks like. And that's going to help in smoothing it as well. OK. So the next thing that we can go ahead and do is exit the, the sketch. And now we're going to actually use that sketch that we created to trim the surface that we created earlier. So we have that surface. We have that, that mesh sketch. Let's go over to the Model tab. And we're going to use a, a, a tool called Trim Surface. So go ahead and select the tool um, entity to be that, that spline that we created, the sketch chain. And then the target body is going to be that surface that we created. So let's go ahead and click Next. And it's going to leave us with the bike seat. And we'll go ahead and click Accept. OK, so now we have a um, surface created from the bicycle seat. Um, and there are a few more things that we can do with this. Um, we're going to go ahead and create the holes um, for where it would be mounted. So let's go um, to the sketch tab. And we're going to um, choose the original mesh and choose a uh, mesh sketch for it as well. I'm just going to go ahead and hide this uh, surface body for right now. And um, from there, we're going to set the base plane to be, um, in this case, the top plane. And we're, we want a silhouette range. Um, and we're just going to do that by dragging this arrow to encapsulate all the holes. There we go. We have all the holes. And we can just go ahead and click Accept for the mesh sketch setup. OK, let me turn the mesh off. And now we have holes um, created. Let's go ahead and just use circles. And you can just hover over and double click. And it'll add in the circles um, that it thinks is about the um, dimension required. OK, nope. And let's try that again. Just make sure you double click kind of quickly, otherwise it'll create a pretty large circle when you try to go on to the next one. OK, so I just want to see what the dimensions are for these, and then we can kind of average those out. If you have something a little bit more rough like this, you can always use this and just kind of look over what the dimensions are. It looks like it's probably going to be around um, 3.75 uh, millimeters as the um, diameter, as the um, radius of the hole. So I'll just go ahead and set that. And you can set that for all of them if you like. I'm just going to set one for the sake of the video and click OK. Um, and then now that we have that, we can go ahead and uh, exit. Uh, the sketch and we're going to use those circles to go ahead and cut the surface that we used uh, that we made before so let's go ahead over to model trim surface we're going to select the tool entities to be our um, circles should be able to come over here and just select the entire chain and then go ahead and set the tool body to be our trim surface let's go to the next and select that to keep it and now we have our bicycle seat. OK, and that concludes this tutorial on um, auto, uh, on surfacing a bicycle seat. Join us next time for um, later tutorials um, on how to create a turbine blade. Thank you again.